going to say good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I hope that you have some fresh air in the courtyard in this beautiful place. Um, yes. Yeah. All right. We heard so much about sustainability yesterday already. Uh, we heard about limitation to sustainability. We heard about circular economy. These are all aspects of sustainability. So today, I would like to look at the aspect of interconnected risks. That's why the title of my presentation is Managing Interconnected Risks for Sustainable Development. I'm not sure if you can get along with this thing. Can I just turn it here? This work? Okay. So. Ah, wonderful. Perfect. So, um, people know the concept of sustainability, but not many people know how sustainability is related to risk reduction. Actually, disaster risk reduction is an integral part of social and economical, economic development. And that is very um, intimately related to um, sustainability uh, development, su sustainable development. And this has been confirmed or recognized by various international documents and frameworks. For instance, the Yokohama Strategy and Plan for Action for a Safer World or Millennium Development Goals to the Johannesburg Plan of Implementation, or Hugo Framework for Action, Future We Want, and with the most recent one, recent one, Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction from 2016. And also the Agenda 2030, the goals number four, number 11, and number nine, they reaffirmed the interrelationship between sustainability and disaster risk management. Oh. All right. Uh, as I just heard, the pandemic cases here are also rising. This is true in many places of this world. So the pandemic is not over yet. Um, and from pandemic, we can already have an excellent example how a risk interrupts sustainable development. I have some statistics here. Um, you may know the SDG number one is no poverty. Since 1990, the poverty re reduction has been quite successful. And people living in extreme poverty defined by PPP, which is the purchasing, purchasing power parity, um, have been reduced from 1.9 billion to 648 million in 2019. But due to COVID, the number is on the rise. By 2030, we would have had only, that's still too many, 537 million people living in extreme poverty. That means every day less than $2. But due to COVID, there will be 50 million more people living in extreme poverty. So not only we haven't managed to reduce the number of people living in extreme poverty, and the number of these people will increase due to COVID risk. So now you can see how disaster risk reduction is intimately related to sustainable development. Uh, the slide you see is from the UN Research Roadmap for Post-Recovery. Uh, you can see here that the UN recognized the interdependence of people, systems, and generations. And COVID made that kind of interconnection visible. 
It used to be latent. It has always been there. But COVID pandemic has made that kind of interconnectedness visible. So if we would continue business as usual until 2030, you will see what kind of future we can have. So the humankind is really at a crossroad of which pathway we choose. Do we pursue more sustainability or we continue like we have been doing for decades? I think the result is quite clear. Uh, especially the recognition of interconnectedness of people, generations, and systems. Um, this is a very important um, discovery, not a new discovery, but a rediscovery. And this is also true for risks. The risks we are facing are more interconnected than we can think. For instance, um, you would not think that the Arctic heat wave would be connected to Texas cold wave, but they are. Um, UNUH has the United Nations University Institute for Environment and Human Security just launched a report which is called Interconnected Disaster Risks. In that report, we examine um, 10 events and how they are related to each other. Uh, the most uh, zillioned connectedness of these 10 events are threefold. Um, and these are the root causes of these risks. One is apparently the CO2 emission uh, through human activities. And the second one is inadequate uh, risk dis uh, reduction um, management. And then we also have the third one, which is, let me find it, is the undervaluing economic uh, environmental costs and discounting future. If you use the resources from today, we're discounting future. If you emit that much CO2, we're discounting future. So these are the three main root causes for the disasters which have taken place. We selected 10 events to be examined. The criteria was quite simple. These 10 events have impacted our daily life or will impact us in the future. And they are very famous. They are well, very well known. But we also chose um, one less well-known event, which is the Chinese paddlefish distinction. Uh, we looked at how these 10 events are interconnected. I just mentioned the Arctic uh, heat wave and the cold wave in Texas. Uh, so what happened was due to the um, heat wave in the Arctic, the polar vortex above the polar area has been destabilized. This could manage to move to North America, to Texas. That created the Texas cold wave. So these are seemingly unrelated events, but they are intimately related. I think this is uh, okay. See? Yes, okay. So since we um, are still dealing with the challenges of COVID, I want to look at these events through the lenses of COVID. So what happened was um, once the disasters have hit, the COVID cases spiked. For instance, in the case of Texas cold wave, the hospital was already very crowded. And when COVID um, broke out, the hospital sent people back to home because you need to keep social distancing. But they didn't expect the cold wave to hit soon after. So they sent people with plug-in equipment home. Once the cold wave has hit, the electricity grid broke down. So people who were sent to home could not use their equipment. 
So um, the, this disaster hindered the recovery of the people and put more burden on the health system. What happened after Beirut explosion in Lebanon uh, was very similar. First of all, a lot of health centers were just blown away. Obviously, they could not treat COVID patients anymore. And in the case of Cyclone Anfan, was that people <coughs> hesitated to move to shelters because they were afraid of infection. And in the same time, the capacity of these shelters have reduced because you needed to keep social distancing. So many more people who could have been protected couldn't be protected due to uh, COVID. So COVID is interacting with many of the natural uh, or man-made uh, and natural hazards. So three things became uh, very uh, zealand through the interaction between COVID and the other disaster risks. One is all of these resulted in increased financial vulnerability and resulted in reduced effectiveness of disaster response and also disruption of supply chain. I think even in Europe we experienced that. And it's almost absurd that in Germany you could not buy toilet paper anymore. Don't ask me why it's, um, the toilet paper was, which was a shortage. But even here we uh, felt the supply chain dis disruption. If you talk about financial vulnerability, this is especially true for the Global South because they are already vulnerable. Once disaster hits them, then this will increase their financial vulnerability. For instance, 67% uh, uh, of the people who live in central Vietnam uh, who experienced the flood event, they lost their income and they also could, could not migrate to other areas to look for alternative income because of COVID, the travel restrictions. Um, in, in the case of uh, Cyclone Anfan, for instance, most of the people live on agriculture or aquaculture, and these people didn't have the market to sell their product because the markets were closed down. So all of this increased their financial vulnerability. Not only that, uh, COVID also reduced effectiveness of disaster response um, because simply you cannot send any rescue teams into the disaster areas because of the COVID restriction. Uh, or you can only help people in a very direct, indirect way. Um, and in some cases, you cannot avoid uh, close interaction with people. That again, increased um, infection risk. So all of this leads to very ineffective disaster risk response because of COVID uh, restrictions. Uh, we mentioned just a little bit about disruption of supply chains. For us in Europe, it might be toilet paper, uh, might be uh, 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 blind activism in buying canned uh, food. But in the Global South, it's a very different story. Uh, for example, uh, in the case of a desert Lacoste outbreak, <coughs> uh, simply people did not receive any more pesticides, so they couldn't deal with it. The supply, supply chain was broken. And in the case of Texas cold wave, the pumping parts were not delivered. So they could not repair the home. They had to live in the cold for a long time. The root cause in this case is also because of the electricity grid, uh, Charlie knows more about it, I'm sure, uh, is separated from the national grid. Why? Because it's cheap. Cheap is not always a good solution. If you do not invest in resilient, critical infra infra infrastructures, you will feel the result of being cheap, what that, what that means. And there are solutions. 
but the solutions are often with side effects. For example, if you uh, control lab cost, um, you use pesticides, and this lab cost becomes resi uh, resistant, then you have to invent another type of pesticide. And this will, again, damage biodiversity. In that sense, we are, again, discounting future. Uh, we, are, we are destroying the soil and the quality of soil. We are dis destroying biodiversity by doing that. Um, and another case would be the hydropower um, construction. This will, uh, in, to a certain extent, uh, help us manage a flood risk and um, uh, also produce renewable energy. But it also has big um, side effect. In the case of the dam built in China, it's not the only reason, but it was one of the reasons why Chinese paddlefish distinct it. Uh, this paddlefish is not a pretty fish like Nemo, but this fish survived 200 million years, even survived dinosaurs, but didn't survive us. That's a tragic we cannot reverse. However, it is possible to have no regret solutions, such as ecosystem-based solutions. If you um, take that kind of measures, it might be slow in showing effects, but for the long run, it will repair the ecosystem and provide us much more uh, ecosystem services and in the meantime, reduce climate change uh, risk and mitigate that risk and increase biodiversity. Uh, we have in the institute uh, a project looking at these kind of solutions. We not only uh, look at the solution using nature-based um, approaches, but also look at how we can overcome barriers of local communities to adopt these solutions. What would be the barriers and how can we create more buy-in in such solutions? Because people tend to go for the cheapest solution. So we need to really inform people how cheap solutions can result in bigger disasters. In the meantime, we do need to respond to immediate, uh, immediately after disasters have um, hit. So we have to combine different solutions. Uh, the other solution which can be combined is social protection. Uh, we call it adaptive social protection because it is scalable. You can scale it up and horizontally but also vertically. Uh, we heard yesterday from Professor uh, Crew. He said um, the most effective thing is to combine different technologies. This is the same for um, solutions to manage natural disasters as well. Uh, if you combine this, this will strengthen all aspects of disaster risk management um, and in the meantime, increase the capacity of climate change adaptation. Um, these programs will provide, for instance, health insurance, unemployment insurance, injury. Uh, this will greatly help people not to go for the short-term solutions. For example, in the Central Vietnam flood event, uh, if people wouldn't have such insurance solution, they would sell their livestock or other productivity assets. That would release the short-term pressure, but for the long run, it's not a good solution because people would be pushed back into poverty and stay there for a very long time. Uh, so we need to use the combination of different solutions to limit the impacts of disaster risk uh, and to uh, respond to these disasters and climate change. So I think we have been in a vicious circle so far. Um, the, you have seen how these 10 different events interacted with each other, especially COVID in this case, and how this one event uh, strengthened the 
negative effects of the other events. But we can also create a positive loop, like combining all these different solutions. And then they will have a reinforcing positive effect upon each other. That's where we want to go. That's the future we want. Thank you. Thank you.